Hi everyone, welcome to our National Drive Electric Week webinar on engaging with PR and media. We're gonna begin in just a moment or two. We're still waiting for people to show up. As you are waiting or if you're joining, uh, just to give you a reminder, if this isn't your, or if this is your first time joining our webinars, maybe you're not aware, I just wanna guide your attention over to the control panel where there is a questions uh, pull down menu. And that is where you can type in a question at any point during our presentation. Um, we'll see it at the end of the webinar and we will um, get to the, your question at the very end. If we don't get to your question, if we run out of time or um, if we don't answer it for some reason, just know that we'll follow up with you right after the webinar. Um, if you have a comment to share, um, if it's not a question and you don't want it to be addressed during the Q&A, but rather you want to share some information or provide a, um, a link or just to leave a comment about something, feel free to leave that information in the chat box. The chat is the pull down menu at the very bottom of your GoToWebinar control panel. And when you click it, you are able to um, <laughs> you're able to type your message in the box and you can select who you send it to, whether it's the entire audience or if it's just the presenters or if it's a particular individual even who's attending. So just know that that's the area to leave comments or information or if you have a question, it's right at the top under questions. Okay. Um, and so with that, it looks like we will begin. I am Mary Lunetta. I am the campaign representative for the Sierra Club's Electric Vehicles Initiative. And I'm joined by my colleague, Kylie Morgan. Kylie, do you wanna, did you switch the slides already? Oh yeah, you did. Okay, see it. I see it now, <laughs> thanks. Um, I, I'm joined by my friend and colleague, Kylie Morgan with Play in America. And we're gonna be presenting today, um, sharing tips and information on how to secure earned media and how to generate um, buzz and more attendance and attention through social media. And with that, you can go to the next slide. Cool, thanks. So more, more events are really being organized than ever before. We anticipated um, hitting 300 events this year. It looks like we're gonna probably exceed that this year, uh, which means that you may be in competition for media coverage with other NDU events in your community. So focusing on what makes your event really unique will be a really good thing for you. Make sure to highlight um, whatever makes your event unique in all of your PR and your media outreach. For example, um, in Watts, California, Watts is a, a suburb or um, on the periphery of Los Angeles. It's located in the LA area. Um, and uh, this year they're really gonna be in, actually in competition with the larger LA event. Um, and in previous years, the Watts event has really focused on affordable programs for low and moderate income residents, which sets them apart from uh, the major, the larger LA event. And so that is an example of creating a unique interest. Um, other ways to secure more earned media is of course, working with local influencers, such as public officials, celebrities, organizations, and community leaders, partnering with them, build your exposure. Another really strong hook for media attention is using your event to announce new state or local efforts to expand EV adoption, or if you know that there are charging stations um, that are going to be coming into your community and using that as a uh, using NDU as an opportunity to um, highlight those new uh, installations um, or announcing them or even like ribbon cutting them, uh, having a ceremony around them is, is a good way to um, to generate more exposure. You can also display city fleet vehicles. If you know that there's uh, any electric uh, vehicles in your city fleet, whether that's buses or um, other types of vehicles. And also of course, making National Drive Electric Week proclamations like city proclamations or in Washington. I think Washington last year did a whole state proclamation where they had the governor make an announcement. 
Um, you can also do new program announcements under your state's VW settlement mitigation plan. Uh, if you need, if you have more information, if you would like more information about what that means, um, definitely reach out to me uh, and we can talk offline. And um, I'm happy to share more information about that and how uh, the VW settlement could be a hook for generating unique interest at your event. Another way to uh, get uh, secure earned media through having your event be a little unique is um, showing the human impact of electric vehicle adoption and uh, reaching new and diverse demographics by sharing personal stories, real people who drive electric vehicles, who maybe um, went on a really long road trip that's interesting or compelling and hearing directly from them to the audience about how easy it was for them to charge and to find charging stations. Those are some examples of how you can share compelling local stories. Next slide, please. So to recap, the best way to attract strong media coverage is branding your event as unique to attract a large and diverse crowd. And by engaging that crowd through entertainment, uh, speakers, or ceremonies. Next slide. All right, Kylie, I'll hand it off to you. Hi, thanks so much. Um, so rules of engagement. Um, these are just some tips to remember uh, when you're engaging with the media. Uh, first one is to keep it local. So two weeks before National Drive Electric Week begins, we will share local reporter contacts with you, um, but that information is not a complete list of your local media outlets. Uh, so you know we encourage you to do, do additional research and find other outlets you can reach out to. Um, you know, look out for bloggers, reporters, and editors. Um, you know, bloggers are kind of a hidden gem sometimes who might uh, be a good resource for event. Uh, another thing is using clear, concise subject line with an event date. So when you email them, make sure your subject line isn't too long uh, and be sure it includes your event date. Uh, another important aspect is to email um, your media contacts individually. Uh, when you CC them, uh, all everyone you emailed can see who you emailed, and it can create a little bit of competition between reporters. Um, and it's you know it's also just a little unprofessional, so be sure to use BCC or email individually. Uh, another important aspect is formatting your emails. Um, think of this email as a letter or as a proposal to this reporter of why they need to come to your event. You know, use proper spacing paragraphs, um, proper fonts, make sure the fonts and the font sizes are the same throughout your email. Um, and also avoid exclamation marks. Uh, so, you know, this event is not breaking news, as you would say, it's not a, a fire or a flood. Um, so, you know, there's no reason to use an exclamation mark. And it also, again, looks more professional um, without them. All right, uh, some more rules or uh, you know suggestions are to keep it short and simple. So only put the key aspects of your event, such as if you're having a ribbon cutting ceremony, uh, if you're having a test drive, which models will be available and dealers will be present, um, which organizations will be present. Uh, just keep it to the meat of your event. Uh, also include the most important and eye-catching things first. Uh, reporters, they want to see a reason to be there, you know, right when they start reading your email. So make sure to put that at the top. Uh, also, be sure to email first and allow a day or two in between um, before you give them a call. All right, uh, messaging. So uh, these are just some more tips for uh, what you want to do if you're being interviewed. Uh, the best thing you can do is to keep it simple. Uh, so the, the rule of thumb is to pretend like you're talking to a relative or, a, you know, an aunt or uncle or a sister about EVs. Keep it simple, understandable, and positive. Um, also, you want to start with your strongest statement. So be prepared with statistics about how many attendees showed up to your event, 
uh, how many vehicles showed up, the, the, you know, longest range of a vehicle that showed up, you know, just keep it positive and keep it strong. Uh, and also be prepared with solutions. So a lot of common questions that people who don't know about EVs are, do electric vehicles have enough range? Or are there enough charging locations? So be prepared to answer those questions with positive answers such as, you know, well, a Tesla has such and such range, you know, which is more than enough for your daily commute and even for a road trip. You know, present the various apps that are available to find charging stations. Um, a good way to prepare is to practice with, again, a relative in advance. Have them ask you some questions Porter might ask and just be prepared with your answers. All right, uh, another important aspect is assembling your team. So uh, it's very good to have this prepared ahead of time. Make sure you know who's going to, you know, for example, if you've invited a public official, make sure you have someone assigned to meet them with tell them where they can set their, set their items down or set up. Um, give them, for example, an itinerary of what the day is gonna look like. Um, you know, it's important to assign people to different tasks. Also, uh, a very important aspect of this is taking lots of high resolution photos. If you assign someone to only do social media and take pictures, you'll have lots of good media from your event. And of course, we love having that media content because it helps us publicize and do. And also we encourage you to live tweet, live stream, and post on social media. Uh, the, you know, the more you reach, the more people you reach on social media this year means more attendees next year. You know, so always be thinking about next year and ways to make your event bigger and better. All right, uh, Mary, I'm going to hand it off to you. All right, cool. Thanks, Kylie. Um, so here is the timeline that we suggest for engaging in earned media. Starting um, at four weeks out, we suggest uh, you place your event notice in local calendars. Uh, calendars that advertise local public events should be sent the announcement um, to be included in their calendar as early as possible, but we think that four weeks should be a good enough time. If you've already done so, great. If you haven't yet, we recommend um, doing so this week or early next week since we are just about four weeks away from Drive Electric Week, or at least the start of it. Um, and this is really a great way to generate more people attending. People are really curious about EVs and want to check them out for themselves, especially with all of the interest around Tesla recently. Um, so we, de we definitely encourage you all to try and get placement in local calendars. Um, and doing so, by the way, doing, doing this placement in calendars pretty much takes the same form as a media advisory, but the focus is more on public attendance details, such as being free to the public, um, making sure, of course, to share your registration link, uh, explaining disability access, if, if you have, um, if it's uh, ac accessible, making sure that that's uh, shared, um, giving parking, uh, um, information or directions to the location is also very important. When you are one week away from your event, we, we, we suggest that that is when the media advisory goes out. Um, you could do so a little earlier, but um, do, our experts say that a one week should be pretty sufficient. And then when you are one or two days away from your event, that's when you should do the media reminder and do the pitch call when you pick up the phone and start actually reaching out to um, media outlets. And then the day of your event, that's when you do another call to news desks and send the press release so that they're aware that this event is happening and all the great things that you expect um, to come out of your event. Next slide. Okay, so it's always a good idea to learn who local reporters are that might be interested in covering your event. No one really knows this information better than you because you are from your town and your state, but Sierra Club will also share contact information for reporters who have covered EV issues 
in your area. We gather this information by city and state and share it with all city captains before August 31st. Um, so you can expect a message from me uh, in between the sometime during the last week in August. But in the meantime, you can send calendar notices to local news stations and newspapers. Um, their scheduling email can often be found on their website. So um, yeah, so just note that you're not alone. We're going to help you. <laughs> but also, uh, we don't. We're not all knowing. We may miss some some key folks that you should reach out to. So definitely make sure you do your own research. Um, that always helps. Next slide. Uh, this is our sample. It's a screenshot of our sample media alert. Uh, this all the stuff in yellow is where you fill in details specific to your event, such as, uh, you know, who's involved in your event, who's participating, who's organizing it, if you're with a, a certain group or organization, um, definitely name that information, say what, what the event is going to be focusing on, what, what aspects of the event um, are going on, when, of course, the event is, where it is, and um, any visuals also, that might be a good idea too. So if you have any um, uh, any uh, photos that you want to share from last year, you can attach those to the media alerts. Um, you can also explain what is going to be expected at your event if it could be a good visual for the media. For example, if you're going to have um, an electric transit bus at your event, definitely mention that. Um, explain what, what other stuff will be there if they're going to have city fleet vehicles there. Because not only is that interesting from a news perspective, but that also signifies to the media that this is really cool and it might be good for a photo or, or, um, or news interview. Um, so yeah, so th there's our media alert. If you have any trouble finding this template uh, on our website under the resources page, feel free to, again, shoot me or Kylie an email and we can help you out. All right, next slide. Okay, so for the day of the event, um, just a quick note that the if you do have an interview scheduled, if you know that there's going to be an interview happening, um, just make sure that you have a location in mind where it would be interesting or um, really uh, a good place visually uh, for the for the background of the interview. Um, someplace that isn't too, too noisy, so not really like in the thick of where all the people are expected to be, but maybe off to the side where it's not going to be as noisy, but you'll have a good view of all the people that are in the background, or maybe that electric transit bus that's going to be there, or school bus that you know is going to be there. So make sure that the placement is really good. And then confirm that spot um, that you're thinking of for interviews. Uh, with the reporter or the videographer, whoever you're expecting to um, speak with, when they arrive, confirm that information because, you know, they might suggest another place different and that's okay, but you just want to have good communication. The other thing is you really want to identify spokespeople ahead of time. So if you are the city captain, but you're not really feeling like you're the best person to conduct the interview, maybe there's someone else on your team, definitely connect with them first ahead of time. You'd be surprised how many people kind of wing this, but it's a really good idea to have these discussions with your team as early as possible so that they're prepared. Um, uh, another, another idea, a good tip for the day of the event is if you know that you're going to have the media there, uh, it's good to offer a guided tour, um, a tour of all the electric vehicles you have on display, um, as well as the exhibitors that plan to be there. Um, and us, another good tip is to have release waivers. So if you do have anyone that you plan to interview, make sure that they have a release so that everything, all, the, all your bases are covered. Um, what else? Oh, after the event. Good idea to thank the attending media. So once your event is done, you definitely want to um, offer your, your wrap-up press release, which is the release that says, you know, we had this many people attend and these great things happened and these people spoke and where we announced this charging station um, because that's also an opportunity to get into the media, um, but also reach out and thank the attending media for being there. They really do appreciate it. And then it's a good relationship that you've established for next year. 
Next slide, please. Oh man, this is like a really great and probably not as well utilized um, strategy for getting in the media, local media. But uh, this is a little tangential to organizing your event. But another good way to have people aware that your event's gonna happen and get people interested is to submit letters to the editor or to write an op-ed and then place that. And this is the best time for that. Um, having it happen now will get people thinking about your event and also just EVs in general. There's a lot of things happening at the federal level when it comes to clean transportation, the fuel efficiency standards that are being rolled back, the Volkswagen settlement, and also local things that are happening in your city or your state that um, you are better prepared to know about um, because it's your community. So tying those local issues in to Drive Electric Week is a great way to get people really excited about attending your event. So we recommend do, uh, submitting a letter to the editor or writing an op-ed for, for everyone who's organizing an event. Um, good tips to keep in mind for a letter to the editor is keep it real short and simple. Anything under 200 words is probably pretty good and getting it out there one or two weeks uh, ahead of time is a good idea. Same with an op-ed. So an op-ed you could do one or two weeks, that's, that's good, but there's no harm in getting it out earlier. So if this is something you wanna work on now in terms of the messaging and then finding the right person to sign that op-ed, then that's something that you should start now and then placing it one or two weeks before your event. Um, a good op-ed is about 700 words or so. Um, and if you have any um, ability to focus on an action so making sure you're even if it's just make sure commit to having your next car be electric uh, resist Trump's hashtag resist Trump uh, next car be electric that could be an action but it, it can go more more specific and in depth um, again based on what makes sense for your community uh, using personal testimonials is also a really good idea put names and faces if you know that you have an elected official in your area that drives an electric you can also highlight them maybe reach out to them for a quote um, if you know of someone who has a really cool story uh, related to their electric car their electric vehicle um, their purchasing experience of it definitely share. Those are really good things to include in op-eds and LTEs. LTEs are letters to the editor. And if you need help with this, if you if you feel like this is something you truly want to do, but you're having a little trouble finding the right words or the right messaging, again, you can reach out to me and Kylie and we'll be happy to connect with you. We also have some great um, team members in our communications department who can also lend assistance. So feel free to reach out. Next slide. So what if media doesn't show to your event? That's okay, this is not the end of the world. You actually can be your own media outlet. Uh, in order to do that really well, um, take lots of photos and good photos. What we like to have in photos are people. A lot of people take photos of the cars because you know, as EV enthusiasts, we wanna take cool photos of cars, but it's really important to also show that people care about these cars. So having photos of the cars or um, maybe an aerial shot of your event with a lot of people in it is really, really good. And a good, um, the kind of photos that we like to use in our communications and our outreach materials. And having them be high res is also really important. Um, our smartphones are taking better and better photos, but um, you know, if you don't have a smartphone that has particularly good photo capacity, uh, then definitely use a really fancy camera or find someone, a volunteer, who has a good camera that they can use to take those photos with. And then we recommend um, sending those photos, sending your release and good quotes uh, from the event to your media list for online stories after your event takes place. That, the, the media coverage doesn't end just because your event has ended. Um, another good thing to keep in mind is the role that social media will play in, 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 the, um, in the amplification of your event um, through earned media or social media. Social media is a good way to catch the attention of earned media after your event, also leading up to your event too. Um, so with that, uh, next slide, and I'll hand it off to Kylie. Hi, thanks so much. All right, so um, I just wanted to give you a few um, handles on social media to use as you um, promote your event. Uh, so of course, the main website for National Drive Electric Week is driveelectricweek.org. 
um, be sure to include that in your uh, media advisories to uh, any media outlets. Uh, you can also include it on your Facebook and Twitter posts uh, to direct people to the site um, so they can learn more. Um, on Twitter and Facebook, if you tag um, National Drive Electric Week in your post using at Nat Drive Electric Week, um, we will see that post and we can then retweet it or repost it on our channels um, to help ampl amplify your event. On Instagram, our handle is at National Drive Electric Week. Uh, again, feel free to tag us in photos about your event so we can like it and you know help amplify it. Um, and also so you can follow us on Instagram <laughs> if you like. Uh, the hashtags to use for this year in, again, Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram posts are hashtag endu2018 and hashtag drive electric. And we're going to launch a poll right now, actually. So we don't do much of these, but um, they're kind of fun when we do them. <laughs> so we're going to give this a try right now. Uh, and when we give, when we launch the poll, you're going to lose um, the visual of all the other uh, presentation slides, but then just answer the poll. Once, once we see that we have a good amount of responses, then we'll resume our presentation. So I'm going to launch it right now. Okay, let's see. Did it work? Yeah. Okay, I hope everyone sees this. It says, uh, do you plan to use social media to amplify your end do event this year? And you can select one of the following responses. Cool, I see them all coming in giving a live report. So far, it's about 60% people say yes, often. 26% say yeah, a little bit. 11% uh, is unsure. And so far, 0% say no, not really. That's pretty cool. So 64% now are going to be using uh, social media often to amplify their event. Pretty cool. And we had 93% voting rate. <laughs> OK, cool. Thanks for doing that, you guys. Um, let's go back to closing the poll. All right, there we go. Go ahead, Katie. Thanks so much. All right. Uh, so here's a bit of information on Facebook. Uh, so on Facebook, you have a really diverse group of, you know, age distribution of people who are using Facebook. Uh, it's kind of everyone's home base. It's the social media channel people usually check every day for information. Um, however, a lot of younger people are leaving Facebook. So if your event is geared towards, for example, uh, college students, post-grads, or young people looking into EVs, um, Facebook may not be the best um, social media avenue for you to, for you to use for your event. Uh, frequency, you can post two to three posts a day, usually works best. Um, always use images and videos. Uh, just posting a link on Facebook isn't um, always that visually appealing. Even when you add an image, it, it just makes the post look a lot better. Also, if you don't post often, uh, just a little tip, when you paste a URL, um, you know, a link to a website in your post, uh, right after you paste it, you'll see a pop-up of an image, um, which will be a clickable link to that website. So then you can erase the URL, um, which makes your post look better. You don't have, you know, a long www.url in your post. Also some features, um, you can do live video streaming and unlimited photo tagging. Uh, so Facebook is great for promoting your event and also tagging any sponsors um, or organizations at your event and public figures. Okay, uh, Twitter. So Twitter has a very young audience. 50% uh, of users are under the age of 34, and many of them are college educated. So this is the exact opposite of Facebook. If you want to reach the college crowd or the post-grad crowd, um, this is the social media channel to use. You have no limit on how often you can post, uh, you can tweet. Um, so, you know, the important thing to remember here is that each tweet is a quality tweet. So make sure the tweets are interesting and have up-to-date content. Um, when you retweet something, uh, you know, add a little comment that comments on the tweet, you know, you're retweeting, um, and that adds a little bit of quality to your, to your post, your tweet. Uh, again, uh, some additional features are live video, uh, photo tagging, you can tag 10 people max, um, and also use hashtags to widen your audience. 
so by adding a hashtag such as Drive Electric or Endo 2018, people can search that hashtag on Twitter and they'll find, they'll see all the tweets related to that. So it's a good way to amplify your event. Uh, it's also used by reporters and officials. So if you have officials attending your event or you want officials and reporters to see your event, um, tag them in your tweets and uh, you know just use Twitter often about, to send updates about your event. All right, Instagram. Uh, so the demographics here, less than 13% are above age 34. Uh, again, this means that on Instagram, a lot of the people are young people. Uh, it's also used often by women and, and people of color. Uh, frequency, so there's no limit here. You can also use unlimited hashtags. The important thing is try to post things that have really cool images. Instagram is all about um, cool images and a nice you know, content and description of your image. Also remember that you don't want to put so much content that it gets cut off. Um, so you want to put enough uh, that will be seen without them having to click the more button for them to see the whole description. Uh, some additional features, you can do short videos, photo tagging, and again, use hashtags to widen your audience. Some cool new bonuses on Instagram are hyperlapse, um, which allows you to make time lapses, uh, and boomerang. Boomerang is very fun. You can make short little videos that loop back and forth, such as uh, someone popping a bubble gum. It'll loop back and forth to the bubble being popped and not being popped in such and such. So it's, it's really fun. Uh, you can also do stories. If any of you use Snapchat, stories is similar to Snapchat. Um, they are photo and video streams that expire after 24 hours. Uh, you can also post questions to your followers within these, uh, these stories, these video streams, uh, that people can respond to. So it's a great way to interact with anyone at your event or anyone who might want to follow your event. Okay, uh, just some to social media tips here. Uh, look for iconic visual moments. So if you have a ribbon cutting at your event or you're showing the first electric bus in your community, that's a great iconic moment to capture. Um, also remember to capture lar people and large crowds. Um, so maybe have everyone gather for a picture around the main feature of your event. Um, also experiment with live video. Um, also, another important tip is to look up any public officials or uh, VIP um, social media handles who are attending. Um, you want to make sure to tag them on all of your social media posts so that they can help your event reach more people uh, and hopefully get you more attendees next year. If you have the budget, uh, a great way to reach more people is to boost a Facebook post. Uh, so, what this does is you pay for your Facebook post to reach a certain audience. If you've ever been on a social media channel and see an ad pop up um, on your channel, uh, you know, a sponsored post, that's what this is. You're basically paying for an ad to be distributed to a target audience, and you would create the target audience. Um, for example, you can set um, the audience to be limited to people with certain interests, uh, such as interest in sustainability, electric vehicles, um, or related related topics. Um, and finally, again, don't forget hashtags. Hashtags are very important. Um, and finally, uh, be sure to monitor engagement. Uh, a great way to keep people following your event is to like their comments about your event. If they, they comment and say, wow, what a great event, uh, or respond to them, retweet. If you have organizations attending your event and they tweet about it, um, retweet it and thank them for coming to your event. And please share uh, all your social media engagement in the event report after at the end of National Drive Electric Week. Great, thank you so much, Kylie. So that pretty much concludes our presentation and we just have a couple of questions uh, that have come through in the chat box. But before I get to them, I'll just share that 
quick poll result, results that we took. So most of you all are definitely planning to use social media to amplify your Indu event this year. Some of you are planning to use it a little bit. Um, about 11% of you are not totally sure, but hopefully uh, this presentation helped answer some questions that you may have about how to use uh, social media as a, a really good way to get the word out. Um, so let me go back to the presentation and to the questions. Uh, it looks like if you haven't submitted a question yet, please share with us your question. Again, you can go to the question, uh, the questions pull down tab and you can type in your question there. Um, if you have anything else that you'd like to share, comment or such, you can do so as well. Um, but it looks like Janelle has asked uh, what a media advisory is. Really good question. I apologize if that wasn't clear in our presentation. A media advisory is basically a heads up that you have an event being planned and you want to give the media a heads up that this is going to be happening. It's like a save the date um, for, for the media. So that's a media advisory. Uh, a press release is something you send out much closer to the event, the day before, or even sometimes the morning of. Uh, we have a question from Kathleen asking, what social media avenues do you recommend to reach those young viewers, like college students, if not Facebook? Uh, hopefully, um, I think this question was actually asked before we got to mentioning Twitter and Instagram, but Twitter and Instagram are definitely better uh, platforms for reaching younger demographics. Uh, Instagram is much younger uh, groups of folks, and so is Twitter. So, um, and regardless, those are just really good ways to get the attention from uh, influencers and local media as well. So definitely use Instagram and Twitter to reach out to younger um, demographics. Uh and then I see another question here about uh, what new EVs are getting attention this year besides Tesla. Um, I would say right now everyone's looking out for the um, SUV electric vehicles. You know, everyone wants a big electric vehicle. Uh, also the Honda Clarity and Chevy Volt I've been hearing a lot about um, because they're kind of your longer range plug-in hybrids. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would agree. The Honda Clarity is also just a beautiful vehicle. When you see it up close, it looks like a spaceship. And if you could, if people could get a Honda Clarity at their event, I think that that would generate a lot of interest. Any other EVs that you can think of, Kaylee? Um, right now, I would only say, I think it's called the Kona Electric. It's, uh, I think it's gonna hit the, sales floor in 2019, but it's again, it's, a, it's an SUV electric vehicle. Um, but yeah, that's. Um, yeah, okay, so next question. Oh, also. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I just want to point this out because it's, uh, I think it's mainly being sold in, uh, well, I think it's available all over the US, but its main market is California. However, the Chrysler Pacifica, um, is pretty popular because it's a plug-in hybrid minivan. So, you know, if you have a family, it's, it's a, you know, a, a way to go electric with a large family. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Um, okay, so Barry asks, any advice on boosting a Facebook post or ad? How do we specify a target audience for the boost or ad? Uh, it's been a while since I've actually had to... Um, I do this. Yeah, I can help with this. Cool, um, great. Yeah, so when you boost a Facebook post, uh, so what you do is you post it first, um, and then on your post, you'll see an option to boost. And once you click that, you're able to edit several fields. So you can edit your audience. Um, and once you press the edit, it'll take you, uh, you know, to a screen where you can choose interests such as sustainability, uh, climate change, electric vehicles, electric vehicle conversions, um, you just type in keywords and then choose those interests. Uh, you can also choose different states or locations that you want to target. Um, and then you can set um, your overall budget as well as the amount, uh, the number of days you want your ad to run. And it'll give you a projected number of people it'll reach. 
So it might be better to run your ad for one day because you'll reach more people or you spend, they'll give you suggestions. So if you spend $5 more and extend it by one day, you'll reach this many people. It's, as long as you click boost on your post, it'll really walk you through it. Great, thank you. That's really helpful. Thank you so much, Kylie. Kent asks a question, actually two questions related to the involvement of, um, of automakers, specifically Nissan and Tesla. Um, and those are different involvements at the national level and local events. Did, Kylie, do you want to address his questions about the involvement of Nissan, Tesla, and maybe other automakers and how they are involved in participating and, and do? Yeah, so uh, Nissan is the exclusive automotive sponsor of National Drive Electric Week. Um, however, that does not mean you can't have other EVs at your event. So um, any other EV manufacturer can be a local sponsor of your event. You can have any other electric vehicle or plug-in hybrid electric vehicle at your event as well. Um, there's no restriction on that. Cool, thank you. Gregory asks, are there common questions regarding EV chargers? So I think if you're asking, what are the common questions that people have about charging their electric vehicle? Um, I think some of the qu common questions are, how long does it take to plug in your car and fully charge it, your EV? Um, another question could be, how do you charge your car? with an EV, an EV charger if you don't have one at your home or your apartment. Um, so knowing how to answer that question in terms of what is what are some good ways to, to locate EV chargers in your community and maybe some notable places that have EV chargers installed. So if you know if there's like a point of interest or a, um, a highway corridor that has them installed along the freeway, knowing that information is also really good and helpful. Do you have anything you wanna add, Kylie? Uh, no, I think you covered it. Cool. Uh, okay, looking through the questions. Um, oh, people are just mentioning other EVs to, that are getting good attention, like the Hyundai Ionic. Yeah, yes, that's true. Um, and also, I see a question. Uh, I thought we were only supposed to have straight EVs at events. Um, mm. So just want to clarify, you, you can definitely have hybrid electric vehicles at your events. Um, for some people, it, it makes more sense for them to get a hybrid and, you know, we want to get as many people to go electric, even halfway, um, as we can. Uh, so definitely you can have plug-in electric vehicles at your event, or hybrids, sorry. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, mm -hmm. very, very good to clarify that. Uh, another question from Kent is, how does that, I think this is a follow-up from our earlier question about automakers and their participation. How does that carry through to having Nissan display at the event? Is it totally up to the local vendor? I think when you say vendor, I think you might be talking about the dealership. So it is up to local dealers if they participate in your event. Some of them don't, you know, one of the issues that we have is not enough um, EV inventory at local dealerships. Yeah, Sierra Club actually did a whole report on this a couple years ago. If, you, if you're interested in reading up on that particular issue, it's called Rev Up EVs. And the problem has not gone away, even despite all of our efforts. Um, so when you call a local dealer, even if it's not Nissan, it could be it could be um, Toyota, it could be um, any of your dealer, the dealers. It's really just about their capacity. Uh, starting early is very important. We're gonna have a, web, a webinar on this actually tomorrow, I believe, tomorrow morning, where we answer those questions related to dealership and dealerships and how to get inventory and how to schedule a really good ride and drive. So stay tuned for tomorrow morning's webinar on that. Um, okay, so just going through, uh, someone shares a link to clippercreek.com to find uh, information on charging, uh, charging times charts, information there. Um, and uh, Gregory asks, what is the best way to promote used EVs and their very low price? What is the best way to promote used EVs? Um, I'm not sure if you mean during the interview, but if it is, 
And I think just mentioning the fact that EVs, if it's second generation or if they're if it's second hand, if it's not the first um, um, model, if it's uh, a, a, an older model, older meaning a year or two old even, um, they're far more cheaper. And it's very important to mention that. And if you live in a place like um, Oregon, they have a, um, a rebate for used EVs. So, and that's relatively new. So mentioning something like that in Oregon would be very important if you're doing an interview. Um, but basically there are, um, they're far cheaper. They're far more, more affordable than um, brand new EVs. So being sure to mention that to the media is very important. Um, looks like that does it for most of the questions. Um, if we have not gotten to your question, if we missed it by, by some accident, we apologize, but let us know if you have a follow-up question, feel free to reach out to us at our email address is there on the screen. Um, and we really thank you for taking the time to join us today. Thanks so much and take care everyone. Thank you.